Hi, everybody. Welcome to ATC's Tech Bytes, where our members provide you with the information you need to successfully grow and scale your business. Um, ATC's big, hairy, audacious goal, as you all know, is to grow 10 Austin-based companies to $1 billion in valuation and another 100 to $100 million. And we do this through a robust community where business leaders such as yourselves and my guests support each other through our thought leadership and shared innovation. And we all know that during this time of unprecedented challenges and changes, this is especially important. And we are so proud and happy to be able to bring this kind of programming to our community. So today, my, my guest is Tara Yakawa, and she is the Director of Digital and Content with ATC member One Affinity, and they are our Tech Bytes featured member for the month of April. Thank you so much for joining us, Tara. I really appreciate you taking time to put this content together and also for coming to be able to answer some of our questions. Of course. Thanks so much for having me, Jessica. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm very happy to have you. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, our community is interested in things like your professional background, and we'd love to hear a little bit more about One Affinity and what y'all are doing recently. Yeah, for sure. So um, I've been in the marketing industry for about 15 years. I started out as a copywriter and then moved into the advertising agency space. And I did that for about 10 years. And then I moved into tech. Um, I worked for Dun and Bradstreet managing their digital proper website properties, and I've uh, been at One Affinity for almost a year now. So that was great information. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, One Affinity and what uh, their role is in the market? Yeah, so One Affinity is a three-channel marketing program, and we primarily do digital marketing on behalf of IT resellers globally. I love that premise, and I think that that's a, such an important piece of the puzzle here, especially for our ATC community um, and our Austin Tech community in general. So I'll just dive right in. Um, although many of the businesses that are dealing with um, all of these changes happening right now are quick to cut their marketing spending um, during these times of economic uncertainty, um, do you believe that marketing is actually more important um, now than ever? And can you explain why that remains to be an important investment during um, volatile times like this? Yeah, no, absolutely. Marketing is critical. And for some, I think that they feel like marketing is an easy place to cut during times like this. But it is so important that your business maintain an image of brand stability. And by continuing your marketing efforts, particularly digitally in a time like this, um, it's really, really critical. I think one example of a company who did it really well, um, although they they did receive um, some criticism, but if you'll remember um, back around 9-11, GM did a really incredible campaign um, called Keep America Rolling. And um, the premise was they were, they created a 0% interest promotion and it was a very volatile and scary time for our country. And October 2001 was a record breaking month for GM. So it, that just goes to show how critically important it is to maintain your marketing efforts in order to showcase that brand stability and take the opportunity to stand out against your competitors. That's such a great story. Thank you for sharing it. I don't quite remember that campaign, but I'm definitely going to look it up after this call. Um, so can you explain a little bit about how investing in marketing during times like this can be not only good for the business, but good for the economy in general and for your community in general? For sure. So I think we all know that um, that marketing helps drive commerce. And as I said earlier, this is a really important time and an opportunity to stand out against your competitors. Some of your competitors may be pulling budgets back, and this is your opportunity to make sure that you are talking about your differentiators, taking the opportunity to create new promotions or adjust your products and services in order to accommodate this new market. So um, I 
think that you're right on point there. The idea of making sure that you're reinforcing your brand and not only that, but you're here to be an asset to the community and to the economy is such a great message. And if you can pinpoint that and run with it, um, kudos to you and your marketing team. Um, so I'll move on. So in the um, blog, you talked a little bit about some of the steps that companies should take in order to maintain their presence and their strong connections during these next few months. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. I think that there's a couple of things that are really, really critical here. And one is focus on retention. Um, ensure that your existing customers are happy and that they're going to stay with you. And obviously it's always easier to, rather than getting that new customers, it's always easier to, to build and grow your existing ones. Uh, I think the other thing that's also really critical here is making sure that you reevaluate your messaging. We've spent so much work getting ready, you know, back at the end of last year, or beginning of this year, to have really solid and exciting marketing campaigns. But rather than just proceeding as planned, it's really important to say, okay, hey, time out. Let's take a step back because the last thing you want to do is come across as tone deaf at a time like this. So really taking a look at your messaging. But I would also caution against um, too much doom and gloom. Um, we know that there's going to be light at the end of this tunnel, even though it seems really uncertain now. So if there's opportunities to weave that message in, I think that that is really critical. And again, as we talked about earlier too, is budget cuts. I think everybody is, 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 is dealing with this, is struggling with it. And how do you figure out where's the right area to cut? And when it comes to, to your marketing campaigns, I just encourage you to really look at the data and figure out where your biggest opportunities are so that you can be all in. We feel like it's better to be really, really have a really strong presence in a few areas rather than just sort of this really light sprinkling presence everywhere. So my uh, my recommendation would just be to make sure that you, you really focus your your messaging and your investment. Sound advice, no matter what kind of uh, environment and climate you're in, um, I think that that's probably good advice to take forward into the rest of 2020 and the next few years as well. Um, so y'all believe that businesses should consider modifying their marketing budgets to be more digitally driven. You mentioned that a little bit earlier, and I think that was a good point. Can you expand on that point and... Um, what that shift towards digitally driven marketing might look like for um, one of your customers and or in general, and how it could be beneficial to businesses right now, especially since we're sort of living a virtual life. <laughs> we are, we are. Um, and I can't help but laugh about this, but anybody wonder what's happening to all of those big event trade show budgets right now? Um, <laughs> Um, I think it's really important, you know, obviously every, you know, I, I don't want to say everybody, a lot of people are working from home right now. So, um, digital is, is clearly like the most sound investment. Um, but also thinking through, you know, everyone's starting to talk about these virtual events. So how can you attend or have a presence at these virtual events? Maybe you even consider hosting one on your own, but you know, back to some of what we discussed earlier, just making sure that you have a presence and a clear message. So thinking through like you could do webinars, podcasts, YouTube videos, anything that's going to position you as a thought leader and help you stand out against the competition that may be pulling budgets back right now. Um, my next question, how might your marketing strategies and approaches change during a uh, time like this that is just highly unusual, uncertain compared to what we were doing previously? Certainly, yeah. So um, as the director of digital and content, I can tell you our strategy is evolving right now. <laughs> um, we are 
really, really focused on our clients. So primarily um, IT resellers across the country and making sure that we understand their businesses, but also the differences that are happening regionally. Obviously in different parts of the country, the, um, the situation around the coronavirus varies a lot. So making sure that we are sensitive to that and ensuring that um, our marketing team remains agile. And I know that that is a buzzword and that that's really, really hard to do, but making sure that you're constantly looking at the data and just setting expectations with your marketing teams that we're going to have to adjust and be really fluid and um, be on a weekly and a monthly basis in order to make sure that we are delivering content and marketing messages that resonate. In the article, that we just talked about or the blog that um, we're basing all of our conversation on, you mentioned that despite all of this economic uncertainty that's happening right now um, because of COVID-19, One Affinity is still seeing consistent client and customer engagement um, with all of its marketing programs. And so I, um, that is great news, that is heartening. And like you said, that light at the end of the tunnel um, so why do you think that is and what does that say about the importance of marketing during, um, during this time? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we're in a little bit of a unique situation as we specifically focus on, um, you know, business IT resellers. And obviously with everybody going to work from home, things around remote working solutions and cybersecurity are top priority. But one of the challenges that we're seeing globally is that because of the the shutdown in China, a lot of the products that these IT resellers are selling um, was slowed and then the supply chain is slowed. So, you know, we're not only dealing with, you know, coronavirus in our own country, but obviously these supply chains are challenging too. It's the same thing that you're seeing in the grocery stores now. So making sure that we are listening to our clients, that we are looking at the data and that we are able to not only provide really great you know, thought leadership content and marketing messages, but make sure that we are coming up with promotions and, um, and product marketing opportunities for what's available. Yeah, we're such a global economy. It's amazing to see what kind of an effect um, things have on our community, on our business community halfway across the globe. So that's a really right. good point. Um, and, and one of the things that we've that we've continued to see is that our clients rely on us more and more from um, making sure that they've got clear crisis communication. You know, the, the the clients that we represent don't necessarily have a central marketing function. So they rely on, on our marketing expertise. And we're really fortunate that we also have a partner success team that um, is able to get on the phone with every single one of our clients. We represent thousands of small, medium business IT resellers, and we're able to give them that one-to-one touch uh, in order to effectively support their marketing efforts. And so they are more engaged than ever because they are relying on us to make sure that we are able to provide those marketing messages. But the interesting thing too, is that we're also seeing um, consistent engagement with the end users. So for these resellers, this is their customers and prospects are still engaging with all the content. They're still, um, they're still in the market. So with, other businesses, uh, business, business IT sellers who may be now in the market for services such as what One Affinity can provide, what are some of the top couple of pieces of information that they should be looking for to make sure that they're getting the top service for their dollar? Yeah, for sure. So if you're interested in One Affinity, um, we have a partner section on our website, oneaffinity.com, and you can definitely um, fill out that form and we'll get back to you with additional information. But as far as looking for marketing support for for IT resellers, you want to make sure that you are looking for a company that has deep content knowledge and deep industry knowledge um, so that they can best speak on behalf of of your business. in addition, you want to make sure that you've you've got somebody that you can call. Um, our partner success team, I feel like, is our biggest differentiator. Um, 
you've got somebody that's personally assigned to you. So whenever you have questions, you're working on your email or your social media campaigns, there's a there's a person that, on the other end of that phone that is going to talk to you and help you customize your messaging specifically for your business. And is there anything that we didn't cover already that you would like to share with the tech community? Um, I know that we went through a whole slew of information. So if you have anything else to add, we would love to hear it. I think the only thing that I would add is it has been incredible with the tech community as well as the marketing community, particularly on LinkedIn. Everybody is really coming together. They're sharing ideas. They are, everybody's creating these videos. Um, everybody, I think, sort of feels like they're an influencer right now, but I can't tell you how much I value that community, you know, working from home. Um, so keep it up. We're all in this together. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So um, really, really appreciate conversations like this, Jessica, as well as all the great conversations that are going on online. Likewise, I am in the same boat and I, um, I do feel closer to the ATC community and the broader business community. It's so strange because we have, I'm like, stay six feet back but I know you a little bit better. Like, <laughs> um, So as you know, this is called Tech Bites. And so a little play on words. We're trying to give as many little bites of information as we can to our tech community. But also we are literally talking about bites of food. And so um, in integration of that here online, I would like to really quickly show what I am having, this is my snack, and this is just a, um, I went a little bit overboard, a little bit. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I wish I was over there to steal one of those. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to come over and I'll just hand it to you through the door. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's pretty much just Mexican bread. And, and I will be enjoying a muffin right after this. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been sipping on my coffee as well, as y'all have seen. And so, yeah. Do you have any, is a muffin like one of your favorite pastries or? Oh, you know, anything with apple in it, usually I love. There is, this is, this is going to be a plug. I actually, I live in Leander and there is a great coffee shop down the road for me called Casa Costa and it's a, a Portuguese bakery and they make these banana Nutella muffins to die for. So I'm, sounds- I'm single-handedly trying to keep them in business through, through all of this. <laughs> I hope you get a little portion of their revenue for this, just for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed talking with you and getting this back and forth, Tara, and learning about One Affinity, of course. Um, I would like to say that if anybody in the community is interested in learning about One Affinity or connecting with Tara, um, you are welcome to come through the ATC website. And especially if you're an ATC member, you can use your member portal to request member introductions. We'd love to get you connected to One Affinity and other ATC members, or you can reach out directly to them and to Tara. Um, As she mentioned, she has the online um, inquiry page. So either way you choose, if you have any questions and you wanna take this conversation offline or one-on-one, please feel free to. Um, And that wraps up our April episode of Tech Bytes featuring One Affinity. So thank you again for spending time with us, Tara. Um, I really appreciate your expertise and it's been a delight getting to talk to you. Um, I will say, remember to go to the ATC website and go through all of our blogs. We've got so much good content from all of our members and we curate um, only the best content to share with the community. So if you have any questions about how to move your business forward in uh, during this COVID-19 crisis, ATC is here for you. We're here to answer questions, but also to make sure that you're well connected in the community so that when we get through all of this, um, y'all won't skip a beat and you can get back to business as usual. Wash your hands, wash your hands, and don't touch your face. Um, If your company is an ATC member also and interested in participating in Tech Bytes, please reach out to us, info at austintechnologycouncil.org. 
I always say .com, .org. And um, I look forward to hearing from you all in the future and hopefully to sitting down with you in person um, as soon as this is over. All right. Thanks, Thank Jessica. You.